Hello and welcome to another edition of the PickupTest.com, the global resource for amplified string players. I'm Jacob, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, the lovely Mr. Luis Moscato. Hey, guys. And the great Scott Frazier. Hi. And today, we're going to be talking about a really unique contribution to our site, uh, the Cloud Vocal Dual Pickup Microphone System. And this is sort of a blended system, but not exactly in the way you'd think. You see, most of the time when we talk about blended systems, uh, whether it be the RM Acoustic system mm -hmm. that we tested a while back, or the Aceto, Aceto. blended system uh, that we're about to make a video for and do a review of, you usually think of a microphone being blended with either a piezo, or in the case of RM, a magnet, uh, but basically two different sound sources happening simultaneously. And mm -hmm. that's not exactly what's going on here. Uh, we didn't even realize that until we kind of opened things up mm -hmm. uh, and kind of checked out what was going on. So mm -hmm. Luis, tell us exactly what this system is. So the system uh, pretty much integrates everything uh, you'd buy like separately. Uh, it, it is a wireless system. Yes. It is a piezo system which comes together with uh, an element and also comes together with a microphone, which you're not going to see it. It's right in the system, in the piece that stays on your violet. The you transmitter. Right. The transmitter. The transmitter. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's word. really the main selling point of this. And I think what makes it so unique and interesting is that it's combining the transmitter technology mm -hmm. in the same little shockingly miniature housing as the microphone capsule is in, right. yeah. as the, I guess, preamp for the piezo element is in. So you have this tiny little rechargeable capsule, and they say it lasts from mm -hmm. uh, five to seven hours, and that is kind of all in one. It's the all transmitter, the preamp, and uh, the mic capsule. Mm -hmm. Now, a minute ago, we were talking about sort of this this blending thing and that it's not really a blender in the traditional sense. I, I was even fooled because on the pedal that it comes with, there's a blend uh, there's, there's a blend knob. And I was like, oh, that's so unique. How are they going to send two channels of audio, one from the microphone, mm -hmm. one from the piezo, uh, uh, to the pedal or to the pedal receiver, which is, yes. which is where all of this terminates. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this yeah. is kind of a multifaceted system uh, in one, and that's not exactly what they do, no, right? They right. give you the choice between the um, microphone element, exactly. which is completely built in uh, to the transmitter, right? Mm -hmm. And a piezo element, which you can plug in, but when you do that, it disables the mic. So yes. only one sound either, source. Either or. Either or. Either or. One channel at a time. Now, on the pedal, there is a line input. Right. So blending sort of can happen there at that level. Right. If you'd yeah, like to have a wireless in. mic but be plugged in with your pickup, I'm not exactly sure if that doesn't defeat the purpose a little bit of being wireless. Right. But yeah. it, it does give you an option. And this system, if nothing else, is about options. Yeah. Because not only do we have this ability to to choose between a mm -hmm. microphone or a pickup uh, which could be useful you know if you're in an incredibly loud situation and you know the mm -hmm. microphone just isn't cutting it you you could switch but also on the box which let's stop calling it a box on the receiver uh we have a pedal and the pedal uh, gives you a lot of cool ins and outs. There's an auxiliary input if mm -hmm. you're uh, a busking musician and performing with tracks. And I can see this being very popular mm -hmm. for, you know, dancing, grooving violinists and street performers, oh, yeah. things like that. Uh, it's practically a dream solution for that type of thing, mm -hmm. right? Certainly. But also, um, there are uh, inputs and outputs to sync other boxes, I guess, if you're using this in an ensemble yes. situation, not exactly sure the. Yes, what uh, what happens when you sync all of them so you don't have like any interference? You can uh, there's a, a system. I don't know how it works, but you can plug it in all of the receivers. Sort of daisy chain them yes. together. 
Is that yeah. to make sure that they're all on different frequencies I so, think they, so they don't yeah. interact with each yeah, other? I believe okay. so. I believe yeah. so. Okay. And then there's also, yeah. uh, somewhat handily, some onboard effects. You know, there's right. there some different reverbs and delays. I mean, so if you really want an all-in-one box, there's not a lot of preamp DIs. You can also, wireless, it can also yeah. be a DI wireless that does all of that. Yeah. It also comes with a lot of different cables uh, so that you can plug in and plug out in different ways. Yes. And I must say it was probably the most impressive unboxing yes. we've ever done. Uh, talking to the to one of the developers at NEM, mm -hmm. I remember asking why there wasn't a blending system, system in there. So what he told me is that uh, so there's two ways it could uh, could be and one is that the blending system is on on the preamp on the preamp mm -hmm. exactly yeah. and the other way is in the box but if it's in the box you need like two channels, two channels of wireless of, of radio frequency and yeah. that would make uh, both solutions would make the the transmitter or the preamp uh too bulky too big yeah. yes as it is it's it's about as thick as I have a, a mini iPod. iPod. Yeah. That, that's it's that big. Yep. That's how thick this is. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute about uh, the uh, the experience of mounting mm -hmm. and, and how it felt. Like I, I thought in general, everything from the knobs on the pedal uh, to the transmitter and the receiver seemed to be really, really high quality it's really high quality everything is really nice uh there's one little thing but it has more to do with my violin do, than anything else mm -hmm. maybe it could be something uh, my violin is very skinny and is a little shallow mm. and uh the ribs are like very short uh -huh. so what happens that it didn't really quite get like i was all the way in you know like yeah and didn't didn't clamp it i see so i had to put like some extra i put a little piece of folded paper on both sides so it doesn't scratch my violin and that that worked one thing that was a little bit strange was the manual and how it was written i mean this is obviously written by folks who english is not their first language right uh, -huh. uh the manual is in several languages as well but uh it was a little bit strange to see for example no mounting instructions for uh the violin specifically Yes. Um, and there's only a picture on the front of the box mm -hmm. of the, uh, you know, the uh, the transmitter mounted nowhere Oops. near where you would mount it, nope. uh, and in no relation to the actual uh, the actual clamp. Uh, uh -huh. That's and and then we thought, okay, well, let's try to you know uh, point it in a direction where the mic would be in a good position facing the sound hole. Yes. and then it wasn't clear where the mic was because that wasn't labeled. On the on the trans <laughs> on, on right. in the, yes, uh, yes, the directions. The, the, the owner's language. manual actually indicates a uh, presumably optional gooseneck mic that appeared to plug into the side. Well, that's not included with this, but the mic is on the bottom of this yep. unit. So right. you see a little uh, little opening on the bottom that uh, so it, it's held just slightly above the the uh, the top plate of the instrument and we only discovered mm -hmm. this with Luis accidentally I blowing like, on it and then we you know yeah. and discovered yeah. that there was actually a microphone, the microphone. there mm -hmm. speaking of it's interesting with the microphone built in we, we occasionally were getting some breath noises yes breath noise was a, a bit of a problem um, uh, because the the mic is basically right under the the, uh, yes. the, the the player's nostrils, yes. really. So um, and with no um, no means to 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 stop the you know no windscreen over the yes. the mic. So that was uh, that was a little bit of a, a sound problem. Uh, in a professional PA system, I would be rolling off all the lows below the lowest note of the violin anyway so that would take care of a lot of that but you don't always have the same level of control when you're just plugged into a, mm -hmm. a, a an amplifier on stage but what we did notice also was a great deal of rejection of of any outside sound when you were speaking to me again it was audible but it was not loud so i think that the mic will be very good at rejecting stage sound mm -hmm. uh, other instruments on stage so 
It seems like all of the research and design with this particular unit went into the, uh, you know, the transmitter, the, the transmitter and the receiver, and making mm -hmm. that seamless and dependable, which it really is. I mean, it was is easy to pair as a Bluetooth speaker with an yeah. iPhone. Right. Really simple, really nice design all around there, and of course the fact that it's combined with the microphone and the preamp creates a tremendous value, right? I mean, yeah. even a you know, even with receivers and wireless systems getting cheaper and cheaper, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the XB Bay stuff or on the lowest end, you, you know, you're still looking at $200 or more mm -hmm. uh, for much more bulky things. And of course, to have all of that in one package just right. simplifies things in with, so many ways. With a reasonable sounding microphone, too. Right. Yeah. I would say That's the only major weakness in design uh, that we found was the piezo element. It's like they literally just kind of threw that in. You know, there's a jack and they give you this very cheap looking kind of piezo element, like the type of stuff you would have gotten in Radio Shack back in the day. It doesn't even look that bad, but it doesn't sound like as what is expected, yeah, you know? Yeah. I'd say sound-wise, it's where everybody else was 10 or 15, 15 years, years ago, ago. In, in, in piezo development. And, you know, piezos have gotten better and they're not, and this sounds like what I remember them sounding like yeah. originally. Yeah, like old school Barkus Berry or Fishman's, yep. it's yes. just really not uh to very, be generous it's not a particularly uh, uh yeah it's a very thin sound. very thin uh buzzy sound yeah yeah and also you know the element is, was way too large for a violin's mm -hmm. foot i mean this mm -hmm. was you know supposedly the violin model i don't know if they expect you to cut it yourself no. but uh you know that's obviously something that should be specified and maybe they should yeah. just shoot for a smaller it's around six times bigger than the the, the area of the foot of the of the bridge right yeah. and it, it, it mounts like the gauge realist under the foot of the uh, yeah. under right the base, or the shadow base and anaflex of... stuff mm -hmm. or any of those i mean mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's a common genre but it uh, I, is not on the level of that pickup or the shadow yeah. stuff is a, is a pickup. It's right. just mm -hmm. like, this does get us back to one of the main issues with the design of the iSolo choice. And that's that the receiver by itself and the microphone are incredibly easy to put on and take off your instrument and make it ideal for busking musicians and players that do not want to have a pickup permanently installed. But once you add the pickup option, all of a sudden that advantage is taken away and a lot more problems are created that the company didn't completely account for. You see, when you plug in the pickup, it disables the microphone. And therefore, to even have the option of the pickup, you need to have the pickup installed and plugged in to the receiver. So what if you're playing a gig and you choose to just use the mic? Well, if the pickup is installed, you need to unplug it, which creates some cable management issues, as now you have a jack and the attached cable potentially sitting on the top of your instrument rattling around, which isn't a very elegant or good sounding solution. That would have been a much more practical solution that maintained the removability of this system, which I think is a huge selling point for a lot of violinists. It would have made so much more sense for Cloud Vocal to have put a toggle switch between pickup and microphone directly on the receiver so that the pickup could stay plugged in regardless of which element the player decided to use. It would have also made a ton of sense for the company to have selected a stick-on or putty-based pickup system, or maybe one that inserted between uh, the wing slit of the bridge, or maybe in the eye, like some Schertler or Cremona or the Fishman system does with the V200. That way, the system would have been removable, or the pickup element by itself could have been taken off if one decided to just use the microphone. At the end of the day, the system makes the most sense, both practically and in terms of sound quality, as a self-contained microphone DI effects wireless system, which by itself at $500 is an amazing value. And we were able to get a lot of good sounds out of this microphone. Now, another cool thing, as I mentioned, is that this does have some effects, and we decided just to kind of let you hear those. Thank you. 
always talk about these types of systems, especially a unique one like this, uh, as filling a certain need. In other words, mm -hmm. what style do you play? What kind of player would a system like this be for? And I think, obviously, for buskers, as I said before, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if, if if you dance in your act, if you play out on the street, wireless becomes incredibly uh, valuable and helpful. Even if you do weddings and things like that, I could see a lot of utility in say, you know, being able to set up mm -hmm. and not having to snake your wires through a muddy field, you know, and whatever, yeah. and just kind of having that uh, in one very, very easy, very, very clean little box mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, maybe keeping the receivers, you know, with the sound man or something yes. like that. That could be really nice mm -hmm. as well. It runs on a 9 volt, 7 to 9 volts, provided by a, like a USB charger. Right. Um I didn't notice if it had any provision for internal batteries. If you it could, does not. No. So you can't go do a subway gig with a battery-powered amp and, and, and the pedal. Well, I yeah. think the idea would be to use like a power bank. Mm. You know what I mean? One of these little power banks that are kind of... You know, right, intended for running a, a cell phone. Yeah, these yeah. kind of USB-powered power banks. Sure. I think that that's kind of the philosophy of use there. Mm -hmm. And that could make Probably. a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good, but, good uh, point. But yeah, yeah it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very specific thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I believe the system comes in at $500, mm -hmm. which may seem expensive but again a decent wireless transmitter you're in the two to three hundred dollar range yeah. at least just for, for the cheapest at ones. least at least yeah yeah at least yeah. if you get like a sennheiser it's going to be 400 to 500 and then you've got a di preamp with some built-in effects which are you know somewhat serviceable but you know again yeah. it's like you know in lieu of having an amp yeah. and it just makes you able in to one. plug into a pedal board yeah. all in one convenient clean easy and mm -hmm. then of course you have your little mic, you have your little pickup. Now, are there better sounding mics? I think it's fair to say, yes, there are much better yeah. sounding mics. Are there better mm -hmm. sounding pickups? Definitely. Oh, yes, yeah. there are way, way, way better sounding pickups. But again, when you play live, and when you're in especially some of these situations where you're busking, you're in a wedding, yes. there is nothing more important than ease, convenience, cleanliness and simplicity mm -hmm. and this really really puts those together in a really cool and innovative package you know so there's just a lot of interesting possibilities, possibilities. with this unit yeah and a very cool value yes so any other thoughts or comments you guys that pretty well covers it yes a nice sounding unit when used in the mic mode uh, that that seems to solve a lot of problems. Yes. Very, very cool. And hopefully in the future, as this is brand new on the market as of right now, mm -hmm. um, uh, March 2020, uh -huh. um, the company will continue to develop uh, and continue to work on maybe the piezo yes. side of things. You know, maybe we'll even see a true two-channel blender down the line, which would really be, be phenomenal. a yeah. really revolutionary, crazy, yeah. crazy cool thing. But uh, that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Thank you.